Hi, so we're reading out of the book, The Copper Revolution, Healing with Minerals. Again, today we are on chapter 31. Enriched white flour blocks copper seven ways. And let me interject right here. I eat hamburger buns, you know, I eat uh, white bread bagels. I think, uh, you know, you can't just avoid all foods. Um, and I think more copper is the solution. So let's just look at enriched white flour <clears throat> blocks copper seven ways. So as we saw, uh, phytate depletes copper. The decision between white flour and whole wheat is a bad one. They each deplete copper. The values of phytic acid in breads range between 1.48 milligrams per gram in white bread and 7.5 milligrams per gram in bran bread. At first glance, you might think, oh, well, okay, so there's a reason why white bread is better. However, enriched white flour has been stripped of the bran and five nutrients are added. Thiamine, riboflavin, niacin, folic acid, and iron. Uh, the first four are B vitamins. Quote, the process of enriching flour restores its nutri nutritive value by replacing nutrients lost during milling in amounts similar to those lost. Almost 95% of the flour, of the white flour in the United States is enriched with iron and flour. Oh, iron had four of the B vitamins, thiamine, niacin, riboflavin, and folic acid. Quote, uh, but does it really store the nutritive value by restoring all that was lost? Well, what was lost? What are the vitamins and minerals in wheat germ? And there's a link. So in wheat germ, we have uh, calcium, 39 milligrams. Iron, uh, 6 milligrams. Mm, magnesium, 239 milligrams. Phosphorus, 842 milligrams. Potassium, 892 milligrams. Sodium, 12 milligrams. This is a good indication here. Look, we get potassium over sodium hundreds of Hundreds of times more, or at least, uh, yeah, lot, lots more. Um, zinc, 12 milligrams. Copper, 0 0.79 milligrams. Manganese, 13 milligrams. Selenium, 72 micrograms. Thiamine, 1.8 milligrams. Riboflavin, 0 0.4 milligrams. Niacin, 6.8 milligrams. Pantothenic acid, which is B5, 2.26 milligrams. Vitamin B6, 1.3 milligrams. And what are the vitamins and minerals in 100 grams of white bread? Vitamins and minerals. Calcium, 144 milligrams. Iron, 3.6 milligrams. Magnesium, 23 milligrams. Phosphorus, 98 milligrams. Potassium and sodium, not even listed. Zinc, 0 0.7 milligrams. Copper, 0 0.1 milligrams. So, uh, fluoride, 48 micrograms, which appears to be added. Uh, manganese, uh, 0 0.5 milligrams, selenium, 22 micrograms, vitamin A, nothing. Vitamin B6, 0 0.1 milligrams, vitamin E, 0 0.2 milligrams, vitamin K, 0 0.2 micrograms. So note, the copper declined from, in, uh, what is it, wheat germ to white bread from 0 0.76 milligrams to 0 0.1 milligrams. The copper content in wheat germ is higher than the total intake of copper for the average person per day. A cup of wheat bran has lost a, uh, has a list of similar minerals, including 0 0.58 milligrams of copper. Uh, and there's a link there. So enriched white flour is a major food staple in the food supply that is in nearly everything. It's not just white bread. It's in sourdough bread, noodles, pasta, tortillas, cereals the cracker aisle, the cookie aisle, the baking goods section, hot dog buns, hamburger buns, muffins, cakes, pie crust, croissants, gravy, anything made with flour. Uh, and that's not a complete list, that's a partial list. So the five new, oh, it's tortillas, did I mention tortillas? No, I don't think I did. Oh, I did. Uh, the five nutrients added, the B vitamins and the iron all block copper. The phytate blocks copper. But bread is even worse as the iodine doctors have noticed. In most breads before 1980, they used iodine as a dough conditioner. Today, they use neurotoxic bromine instead of iodine, and bromine blocks iodine. They also, uh, they often remove natural yeast and use aluminum instead, which is another neurotoxin. Most breads also contain traces of glyphosate. Glyphosate is even sprayed on organic wheat to kill it for the harvest. Since it is not used while it's growing, but only to kill it, it is still considered organic. And glyphosate is a metal chelator. It chelates copper. It chelates other minerals too, like calcium and magnesium. So again, let's review the copper antagonists in enriched white flour. Number one, phytate blocks copper. And there's even more phytate in whole wheat bread. Iron blocks copper. Niacin and B vitamins block copper. 
uh, for it. White bread has the copper content removed. There's bromine, a neurotoxin. Aluminum, another neurotoxin. And again, copper is a major nerve healer. Uh, glyphosate is a metal, metal chelator, binder remover. So that's seven copper antagonists in white flour. Now, a lot of people have gluten intolerance. And this is also called uh, perhaps celiac disease. Others have noted that celiac disease is simply copper deficiency. And copper is good for the gut. It helps build collagen. Copper is an astringent. Uh, and copper is also, uh, I don't think I wrote down here, is uh, an antihistamine. So copper should tighten the pores in the intestine, thus healing leaky gut. Copper thickens the skin and similarly strengthens the walls of the intestine. Here's a few quotes on glyphosate and the diseases it potentially causes. Quote, Roundup has been potentially linked to instances of cancer, celiac disease, Parkinson's, and more. Sounds like copper deficiency. Parkinson's is a nerve disorder. Uh, in the next 50 pages, not me, I'm quoting here, uh, I will present, not me again, yeah, I will present irrefutable research-based evidence that casual exposure to the chemical glyphosate is one of the causes of birth defects, miscarriages, premature births, cancer, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, hairy cell leukemia, DNA damage, autism, irreparable kidney and liver damage, infertility. Quote, AMPA, the glyphosate metabolite, uh, also has genotoxic effects. Neurotoxicity effects include Parkinsonianism uh, and have emerged following acute exposure. Exposure to glyphosate resulted in oxidative stress in lab animals and death of neuronal cells correlating with Parkinsonian pathology. I apologize for losing the source of, of those quotes, but again, this is a book on copper, not glyphosate. Those all look like copper deficiency symptoms to me. Uh, glyphosate, pathways to modern diseases too, celiac sprue, and gluten intolerance, and there is a link and a quote. Celiac disease, and more generally, gluten intolerance, is a growing problem worldwide, but especially in North America and Europe, where now an estimated 5% of the population now suffers from it. Another headline for an article, uh, glyphosate, a chelating agent relevant for ecological risk assessment. So those are copper deficiency symptoms, cancer, celiac disease, Parkinson's, infertility, birth defects, miscarriages, premature births, irreparable kidney and liver damage, and neurotoxicity. And so it's also a very similar story with white rice, uh, but you just can't eat white rice all the time because it also, rice is high in arsenic, which is another toxin. So people say, if you look hard enough, all food is bad for you. And that view might be a bit extreme. So what is realistic? I'm not perfect. Again, I eat hamburgers with white bread. I live in the United States, and uh, this is one of the reasons why I will continue to supplement with copper and iodine and other things. Uh, thank you.